Ministries, high on talks between President Buhari and Chief Justice of Nigeria. INEC suspends 205 staff over bribery in the 2015 election. Federal government restates commitment to fight corruption despite setback at the headquarters. Welcome to NTA Network News with me, Muhammad Kudwa Wubakar. President Muhammad Buhari this Tuesday granted audience to the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onaga. Towards addressing the nation's fundamental challenges. Justice Onaga, who spoke to newsmen after the meeting, restated his commitment to fight corruption as a bane of national development. State House correspondent Adam Musambi reports. Justice Walter Onogen, who was sworn in as substantive Chief Justice of Nigeria on the 7th of March this year, is meeting President Muhammadu Buhari for the first time since returning from his vacation in the United Kingdom. I'm here to thank him also for the confidence he posed in me to head the judiciary of this great nation. And as I've always said, I'm committed to that job and to the good of this nation under the rule of law. Details of their discussions held behind closed doors were not made public, but newsmen sought to know from Justice Walter Onogen his reaction to the belief in some quarters that the fight against corruption is losing steam as the nation's judiciary is not fully cooperating. The fight against corruption has lost no steam. By the way our system is fashioned and designed and operates, when you go to a court of law, you cannot have a drawn game. There must be a winner and there must be a loser. In our system, the loser has the chance of appealing to the highest court eventually. So you can't say because some uh, the government or any agency has lost a case in the high court, so he has lost a case and uh, the, the, the fight is uh, losing steam. You should realize that there is a constitution in place and under the constitution there is a rule of law. It is on record that the federal government has recently lost several high profile cases in the low courts. Do you have anything different you want to add in the fight against corruption in this country? No, 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 no. Personally, I am committed to that fight and it remains so. I remain resolute. I remain resolute in that commitment. The 65-year-old Justice Walter Onogen is the 15th Indigenous Chief Justice of Nigeria. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. For alleged involvement in more than 23 billion naira bribe to influence the 2015 elections, the Independent National Electoral Commission has placed 205 of its serving staff on suspension. INEC has also blacklisted a non-governmental organization for its role in the bribery case. Political correspondent Abdullah Hegarbo Bendonkudu has details. Rising from its top management meeting, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, considered the report of its disciplinary committee on EFCC internal report on bribery, corruption, and money laundering charges during the 2015 elections. The committee established that an NGO, West African Network of Election Observers, made up of retired senior INEC officials, was used in an attempt to influence the outcome of the election. It also found out that out of the alleged over 23 billion naira to influence the elections, more than 3 billion naira was received by INEC staff in 16 states. The commission therefore decided as follows. A, the cases of former national commissioner, one national commissioner, five former resident electoral commissioners, one of whom is deceased, have been referred to the presidency and EFCC for further necessary action. Based on their level of involvement, 205 serving INEX staff will be immediately placed on interdiction, which entails suspension from duties, and being placed on half salary pending the final determination of the cases they have with the EFCC. See, 70 staff about whom there was insufficient inform uh, information, that is in the EFCC report itself, regarding their, their involvement, 
could be referred back to EFCC for further investigation. All those involved are to be investigated and prosecuted by the EFCC. In Abuja, Abdullahi Garba Bruno Kudu, NTA News. Still on corruption cases, the arraignment of former Benue State Governor Gabriel Suswam and two others before the Federal High Court Abuja was stalled due to the absence of former Governor Gabriel Suswam in court. Edina Justice reports that a new date has been fixed for the arraignment. When the case came up before Justice Kola Olive for mentioning, the State Counsel Aminu Kayode Aliu told the court that the first defendant, Gabriel Suswam, who is in the custody of the Department of State Service, refused to be served with court summons and that they only served his representatives. In objecting, counsel to Gabriel Suswam Adedayo Adedeji said his client, who is in the custody of the sister agency, DSS, ought to be served personally, stressing that this is a fresh case for which he has the right to select other counsel. He said the appearance in court was a protest appearance and that they only represented the former governor in another case. Justice Gabriel Kolaole adjourned the arraignment to another date and ordered that the defendant be personally served and be brought to court by the DSS. Another, of course, that he should appear he should be served personally with a copy of the charge, which we really did, but he refused. But he's coming by the order of the Honorable Court now. He has been in the DSS custody since the 25th of February. You cannot be saying that he has refused to accept that because, of course, he is still within the custody of the federal that the arraignment be adjourned till the 11th of May until the court processes are served on the first respondent along with court enrollment order. From the Federal High Court, Abuja, Edino Justice, NTA News. The federal government has called on Nigerians not to be discouraged by the recent setbacks in the war against corruption, promising that the serial negative outcome of corruption cases that were recorded at the high court level will not be dampened, will not dampen the anti-graft battle. A statement by the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, said Nigerians have been assured that all the judgments are being rigorously revived to determine whether there are errors on the part of government or whether the government is the victim of mischief. He maintained that the war against corruption is going to be long, tough, and arduous, but that the administration is equipped physically mentally and intellectually for the long haul with determination to win the war. He noted that the law is on the side of the people. Lai Mohammed added that Nigeria cannot afford unnecessary technicalities as far as the war against corruption is concerned, especially because of the adverse and devastating consequences of corruption on the polity. The government, he emphasized, is therefore more determined than ever to recover as much of the plundered funds as possible and use them to put the nation's youth back to work, fix roads, equip hospitals and universities, and invest in electricity in order to bring industries back to life and ensure that some level of comfort in homes and offices are restored. Getting the youth engaged towards contributing positively to the growth of the country remains the top priority of the Buhari administration. Vice President Yemi Oshubajo said government is keen on its desire to support young people, especially in the Niger Delta region, to stimulate creativity and entrepreneurship. State House correspondent Jide Onifade has this story. The Vice President, while receiving a delegation of the Niger Delta Expatriate Mentorship Committee, an initiative led by the Minister of Niger Delta, Usani Gurusani, noted that the initiative aligns with the commitment of the Buhari Presidency for the region and is capable of catalyzing development. Vice President Oshibaji observed that the mentorship program will expose beneficiaries to international standard, best business practices and technology. Government, he said, desires to support the establishment of a chamber of commerce for youth across the Niger Delta region to drive their creativity and entrepreneurship. Many of the youths from the Niger Delta region may soon be heading towards 30 countries in Europe for training under the National Mentorship Strategy Program. The engagement of young people in the Niger Delta region, which you know is a focal point for the administration's economic concern in this administration. The Delta people should be very, very proud 
of their government because this government is doing everything to make sure that their people are engaged and well equipped to face the future. The program is associated with UNESCO and having collaboration with many MDAs and local investors ready to become sources of funding for the training of the youth outside the country. The youth after the training are expected to be engaged in the commercial and production chains of global corporations. Similarly, the vice president told members of the Nigerian Association of Law Teachers on cuts of visit that the government is committed to sustaining the anti-corruption fight, ensure that the system is clean, government business is done the right way. Vice President Yemi Oshibaji urged that in response to the malice of corruption, Nigerians must stand up for what is right. Professor Godwin Nwabreze Okeke is the leader of the delegation. We are going to um, look at security, national development, the nexus between the two, and also give uh, expert opinions on how the nation could move forward. He said the association is solidly in support of the federal government and is ready to assist in whichever way needed. In the State House, Jide Onifade, NT News. The Nigerian Senate has mandated its Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters to liaise with the National Judicial Council and other relevant agencies to withdraw copies of the different versions of the Nigerian Constitution in circulation. National Assembly correspondent Wadir Biryani has details. The decision to withdraw various versions of the Constitution in circulation followed a motion moved by Senator Chukuka Utazi in the North. He noted that having gone through three successful alterations, there has not been any attempt to embed and graft them into one whole document. The existence of various versions of the Constitution makes it a reliable source of law, which us down its force as the fundamental authority for all laws in Nigeria. Senator Benga Ishefa moved another motion on the urgent need for security agencies to intervene in the increasing rate of kidnappings in Nigeria, while Senator Kabiru Gaya presented a report on the ad hoc committee on southern Kaduna crisis and other parts of the country. The activities of these criminals have caused law-abiding residents of the coastal stroke riverine communities of the affected communities to flee their, co their areas. We found that the role of traditional rulers in this event of maintaining peace and stability in the area is very important. So therefore, I'm appealing to the Committee of Constitutional Review to find a role for traditional rulers all over the country in maintaining peace or the ability for them. We now ask the committee to go back and we know the interim, go back and look at the other parts and also address some of the observations made with, that, with coming to specific recommendation and then bring back the final report. The Senate also considered request of President Muhammad Buhari on confirmation of three nominees for appointment as members of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC. The Senate then adjourned for Easter recess to reconvene on the 25th of April, 2017. From the National Assembly, Wazir Zayan, NTA News. Still at the National Assembly, the House of Representatives has passed four bills at third reading. It includes a bill for an act to establish the National Transport Commission. The legislators also resolved to investigate the circumstance that led to the outbreak of epidemic that led to the death of three students of Queen's College, Lagos. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Nko reports. House leader Femi Bajabia Miller drew a motion of urgent public importance, drew the attention of members to the incident that claimed the lives of some students of Queen's College, Lagos, and kept over 1,000 hospitalized. The Minister of Health, Minister of Education, and the then principal of the school should appear before the Committee on Health for interrogation and submit its report to the House within two weeks. We pray to God that uh, it doesn't continue on a big, bigger basis, but the health of every citizen is extremely important. The plight of the remaining kidnapped Chibok girls and their family members resonated on the floor through a motion moved by Representative Asabe Vilita Bashiri, who represents Dambua, Goza, Chibok, Federal Constituency of Borno State. All the federal government to expedite negotiation for the release of the remaining 195 adopted Chibok school girls that are still in captivity. The House has urged the executive to send 
for the renaming of the Federal University of Britain in Kebi after the first Emir of Bwandu, Sheikh Abdullahi Fodio, as a way of immortalizing him, as moved by Representative Abdullahi Umar Farouk from Kebi State and 105 other members. Members stress on the need to investigate the positioning of advert billboards on pedestrian bridges and its effect on pedestrians, moved by Representative Sajo Sogun from Edo State. Mandate the Committee on SCT to liaise with the Department of Outdoor Advertising and Signage to come up with alternative ways to position the billboards without risking the security of pedestrians. Members pass for second reading a bill for an act to abolish and prohibit the dichotomy and discrimination between first degrees and higher national diploma, sponsored by representatives Ali Issa from Gombe State and Edward Pajok from Plateau State. A new member, Ben Wankwa of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, was sworn in. He replaces Soplutuku Ezaomuka, also of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, through a Supreme Court judgment. He represents Orumba North and South Federal constituency of Anambra State. The House adopted the report of its committee that visited South Africa on the xenophobic attacks on foreigners in that country, led by House leader Femi Badabia Mila. The House has adjourned to Tuesday, the 25th of April, 2017, for Easter break. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. Nigeria is seeking to improve her rating on the ease of doing business to improve its revenues for more economic growth and development. Minister of Budget and National Planning, Udoma Udoma, who said this while giving a breakdown of the economic recovery growth plan to the media, said the roadmap seeks to facilitate the actualization of the Vision 2020. Details with Lea Katung Babatunde. The present administration's agenda is hinged on a triplet fighting corruption, ensuring security and economic recovery. These are coming at a time that the nation is grappling with a sharp decline in revenue which necessitated the development of a road map to address the situation. Minister of Budget and National Planning, Udoma Odo Odoma, says all sectors of the economy are vital for the actualization of the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, ERGP which is designed to, among other things, improve the living standards of Nigerians, attain 7% growth by 2020, build agricultural and manufacturing capacities, improve infrastructure stock, especially power, and build youth capacity. Our future prosperity rests upon our collective support towards the effective implementation of this plan over the next four years. So we will be seeking the support, the cooperation of all Nigerians. The fact that the role of SMEs cannot be overlooked in building a globally competitive economy, the minister says sectoral plans are to be executed with both the private sector and states in continence with the federal government. Once you show people a path, they will invest. So our job as government is where there are constraints, we tackle them. Where there are bottlenecks, we remove them. While the social intervention program has eased pressure on the economy in the fourth quarter of 2016, government believes execution of the ERGP is highly possible and will demonstrate the necessary willpower to make Nigeria one of the top economies in the world by the year 2020. In Abuja, Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Ogbonaya Onu, has commended the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry over its decision to organize Information and Communication Technology Expo for the promotion of science, technology, innovation, and entrepreneurship. This was at a meeting with the leadership of a specialized expedition committee of the chambers. Science correspondent Kieran Umayo reports. The planned expo is designed to encourage startups in technology business and share their technology ideas, take holistic view of the new era in banking, which has to do with big data cloud and mobility, response to cyber threats, and other evolving threats in a connected world. All that the nation requires now is to encourage science and technology, uh, because uh, once we do that, uh, many of the problems we have, whether it's in being able to feed ourselves or in being able to produce uh, many of the things we need, it doesn't make sense that a country uh, like Nigeria should be 
importing virtually everything that we need. The Expo has shown that we can solve that problem. Leader of the Delegation and Chairperson of Specialized Exhibition Committee of the Lagos Chambers of Commerce and Industry, Mrs. Tola Boboaje, made it clear that the objective of the Expo is to leverage on information and communication technology business concepts. The ICT Expo will take place in July this year. Kirian Bumayo, NTA News. The Consumer Protection Council has reaffirmed its commitment and collaboration with relevant agencies towards ensuring consumer protection, satisfaction and safety with respect to products marketing, marketed in the country. Director General of the Council, Dukwe Atoki, stated this on the outcome of the investigations on quality and safety standards of some soft drinks in Nigeria. Olajide Bello has details. Onset Yellow. CPC reg recommends regulatory action for a review of the standards. As some countries have reduced the approved limits, some have labeling ban of the product. The Director General Consumer Protection Council, Dukwe Atoki, gave a recommendation after investigations into allegations on safety of some soft drinks with regards to levels of additives contained in the product. She said the regulatory actions and review is required on benzoic oxide limits in soft drink as the current standard, which has been in existence since 2008, is overdue for review. At Council notes that the level of benzoic acid and sunset yellow of Fanta orange and Sprite and other products sampled are within the required NIS standard limit. The recommendations above are necessary to ensure Nigeria consume safer products. It will be recalled that a suit was filed at a Lagos State High Court against Nigerian Battling Company, the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAFDA, on the health standard of some soft drinks. In Abuja, Olajide Bello, NTA News. The Nigerian Air Force is prioritizing the education of the girl child as a deliberate effort to stop the use of teenage girls and women for suicide bombings. Chief of Air Staff, Air Vice Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, stated this when he received the executive members of the Air Force Girls Alumni Association of Nigeria in his office. Ado Adamu reports. Since the Boko Haram insurgents' capacity for attack was degraded by the Nigerian military in the Northeast, they resorted to the use of teenage girls and women to carry out suicide attacks. Lamenting the new trend, Chief of Air Force Air Vice Marshal Sadiq Abubakar said the military is working with the local communities in intelligence gathering. He, however, identified the education of the girl child as the surest way of addressing the ugly situation. We are also looking at in my degree also, we have been given land by the North State Government and we are working to see how we can uh, build a school there so that the girl child will have the opportunity to go to school. The Air Force Girls Alumni Association of Nigeria, led by the Vice Chairperson Zainab Gambo, said as products of the service, they fully identified with the achievements. The group presented part of assorted support materials to the Chief of Air Staff for upward distribution to their personnel at the theater of operation at the Northeast. In Abuja, Ado Adamu also, NTA News. You can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download on your Android devices at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. Still to come, Minister of Power, Works and Housing moves to ensure improved power supply through liquidity stability for GenCos. Even though, after the break. From what we have seen, we have the capacity which we can rapidly develop or feed in ourselves. If we don't import rice, we stop importing corn and other grains. Nigeria will have plenty of money to invest into developing industries, especially manufacturing, textiles and so on, and develop iron and steel, and complement the infrastructure development. So really, the opportunities 
uh, one solo limitless and we are very very aware of this and we are prepared to explore it to the fullest So tell somebody to tell everybody to come join Maya, baby. I they bring too much sauce. Bro mega music talk. It's gonna be a mad over your team. Bro, where you know we are show stoppers. I am your host for the biggest show ever. You miss the store, you're gonna miss everything. So join me, guys. Let's turn up. We'll be storming across Nigeria. I won't be anywhere else. Everyone who is anyone is going to be there. All Nigerians and this musicians. One big stage. Live and direct. Globe Mega Music Tour all over Nigeria. So watch out because we did come. Let's go. It's the Globe Mega Music Tour with your favorite anchors and special guest stars. It's going to be untamed. Text music and your preferred location to 207. Use 2000 Naira Globe Airtime in one month to stand in line for your free ticket. So what are you waiting for? The Globe Mega Music Tour. Globe Unlimited. This is to inform the general public and relevant key holders that the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development is holding a one-day stakeholders forum on the 2017 National Sports Federation elections as follows. Event, stakeholders forum and draft guidelines for the 2017 Sports Federation elections. Venue, Media Center, Package A, National Stadium Complex, Abuja. Date, Thursday, 13th April, 2017. Time, 10 a.m. prompt. The objective of the forum is to afford stakeholders the opportunity of discussing, reviewing and adopting the draft guidelines for the forthcoming 2017 National Sports Federation elections. Please note that attendance and participation is strictly by invitation. Abdul Razak Salau, Acting Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development, announcer. The insurgency has been contained and agricultural production is bouncing back. Nigeria is working towards food sufficiency. So FAO, thank you for coming. We discussed we are going to need your help in expanding agriculture, in introducing new crops for local consumption and export. We need to make the rural people richer and happier than they are now. We must become a nation where we grow what we eat and consume what we produce. Following the approval of the whistleblower's policy by the Federal Executive Council and its launch by the Minister of Finance, Mrs. Kemi Adeoshun, patriotic Nigerians have been making inquiries on how and where they could deliver information that could lead to the stopping or uncovering of fraud to the appropriate authority and answers to frequently asked questions. The Federal Minister of Finance has therefore dedicated a telephone line for receiving SMS, a whistleblower's footer, and an email address. Information about a possible misconduct or violation could deliver such information for the attention of the team dedicated to process such information. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. You're still on to NTN Network News. The House Ad Hoc Committee investigating the $17 billion stolen 
from undeclared crude oil and liquefied natural gas from January 2011 to December 2014 says it has established facts of infractions in the oil and gas transactions in the years under review. National Assembly correspondent Kenneth Nani has details. Okay, nobody sir, told please, us. Uh, I, the ad hoc committee interrogated the NNPC, DPR, and the Nigerian Navy on issues emanating from their submissions, the demanding further explanations from the NNPC the on issues of crude oil production, swap, lifting, and the CBM petroleum profit tax. The ad hoc committee also requested the account Hello. names and numbers with which the corporation does its oil and gas transactions. The NNPC requested more time for it to avail the ad hoc committee with the required documents. We will provide this information, uh, the Federation share. We can give you what is taken as domestic crude, uh, what FRIs uh, took, what we lifted on their behalf, what we lifted on behalf of DPR. The ad hoc committee also explained that China National OOC, which the DPR affirmed to have lifted 3 million 995,717 barrels of crude oil from Arpo Oil Terminal in 2011 has denied having operated in Nigeria. We have actually confirmed that there is crude oil theft in this country, but we are still investigating. The truth is that people who submitted documents are not even in a position to answer questions based on the documents we have submitted to them. And we are don't want to tell us the truth or there's some kind of collusion uh, because you are asked questions based on the documents that you have submitted and you still say no give me more time some of the documents that we received are about two months old in his submission the attorney general of the federation and minister of justice abubakar malami explained that the federal government has instituted litigations against some international oil companies in the bid to recover stolen oil funds he solicited the cooperation of the three arms of government in the fight against corruption. I will encourage a situation whereby respective agencies and arms of government have a collective responsibility that the nation is not in any way should change. While the ad hoc committee continues with investigations on the issues raised, it goes for that to solicit input from relevant officials to enable it come up with adequate recommendation on the matter. From the National Assembly, Kenneth Nanin. NTA News. Leadership of the Senate has been urged to swear in the senator elect for Akwaibom Northeast Senatorial District, Basi Ekin, to represent his constituents. A coalition of hu human rights lawyers and civil society groups met the plea at a news conference in Abuja. Ado Adamu has the, has the story. The plea, the Alliance of Human Rights Lawyers and Civil Society Groups, said is predicated on the need to allow to the senator-elect takes his rightful position as the legally elected senator of the zone. The spokesman of the group, Frank Taita, wondered why the senator-elect, Basi Etim, is yet to be sworn in over two months after the Federal High Court Uyo Division had declared him the rightful occupant of the seat. More worrisome, the group said, is the fact that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has issued him with a certificate of return in obedience to the court judgment. For us to enjoy a stable polity, we have to open the future as a country. Its appeals on the leadership of the National Assembly to follow precedence by obeying the rule of law since a court of competent jurisdiction has pronounced Etim the senator-elect. In Abuja, Adu Adam Walso, NTA News. Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Baba Tunde Fashola, at the 14th meeting of power sector operators in Oshobo says government remains resolute on generation companies getting paid for their services in order to have liquidity stability in the electricity market. Hamza Musa Magasi reports. It's about practical solutions to critical issues facing the Nigerian electricity supply industry, NESI. Oshun State Governor and the State Deputy Governor attended the meeting. The State House is the most important nexus of electricity sector in Nigeria. The Minister reminds operators about their mandate of reaching Nigerians with safe and reliable power supply as he tasked Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission NERC of entrenching power play between consumers and service providers. Some of you have still failed to give us all of the information that we need 
and I have reiterated that we will not pay any debt that we cannot verify. And as proof that we remain committed to paying debt that we verify, we have paid the debt owed by the Federal Secretariat in Abuja to Abuja Bistro, and we paid about 374 million and I want to believe with this sort of meeting where all stakeholders bring storm and challenges facing the sector and uh, through the meeting come up with solutions and approaches to improve generally the energy supply in Nigeria, I, I'm, I'm not in doubt. And I like the meeting because I like working with them. Um, and you can see the premium, the premium it, it places on the meeting is always here for the meeting. Also in the community, NARC rated the 11 distribution companies in 2016 based on key performance indicators, including progress in metering rollout to consumers, uh, remittance of revenue to the Nigerian bulk electricity trading. Echo Disco emerged as the best performing, while its Kaduna counterpart the lowest. Hamza Musamakaji, NTA News. Federal government has taken steps to address the housing deficit in the country in line with the national housing program of the Buhari administration. Minister of State Power, Works and Housing, Mustafa Baba Shehuri, stated this while inspecting the progress of works of a mass housing project in Latia, Nasrallah State. Victoria Ojuku has the report. Nigeria has housing deficit of 16 to 17 million. The development which the present administration of President Muhammad Tupuari has rolled out its first set of housing units across the country under the National Housing Program. So far, the projects are carried out simultaneously in each state of the Federation with the completion period of five months. While inspecting the 76 units of houses under construction in Latvia, Nasrallah State, the Minister of State, Power Works and Housing, Mustafa Baba Shehuri, said as part of government's commitment to provide shelter, government has directed Federal Mortgage Bank to waive payment of 10% equity on mortgages below 5 million naira. You know, the lifespan for the project is only five months, and uh, we, I think in the next two months, will be through with most of these, uh, these houses. While in Nasrallah State, the minister met with the Nasrallah State Deputy Governor Silas Agara and seek for partnership between the federal and state government to meet the housing needs of the people. In Lafia, Victoria Kaswa Ojito, NTA News. Against the backdrop of government's desire to establish modular refineries in the Niger Delta region, guests on NTA's program, Good Morning Nigeria, described the idea as a welcome development. Timothy Yusuf monitored the program and now reports. Petroleum exploration and refining in Nigeria has been characterized by a lot of challenges ranging from militancy, pipelines, vandalism, and illegal refining. Vice President Yemi Oshimbadu at one of the engagements with the Niger Delta people said the modular refineries to be established will have to be profitable and realistic in order to address critical issues. Over the years, various governments have come up with different policies and programs, including the presidential amnesty program, among others, aimed at addressing the challenges of the region. Guests on the program said the establishment of the modular refineries will bring to an end the lingering problems of restiveness, pipeline vandalism, illegal refineries, and environmental degradation bedeviling the region. And what government is doing now is a welcome development, and I think all the community people should embrace it. The state should embrace it. Whichever way we can, we look at it, it will be useful, it will help in resolving the energy crisis in Nigeria and beyond. I am not against it, but we are saying, look, let us be a bit more organized about it. It's the, the win-win. It doesn't mean that only Niger Delta put a Moscow in the modular refinery in the Niger Delta. Any investor, even from Karana Moda, even from Niger, if you come in and sit with the community and put your template down, and community is part of the process, you set up a refinery. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. Minister of State for Agriculture on Investment in Fish Fund. Details of these and more from our Lagos Metro Center with Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer. Over to you. Thank you, Kudu. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. The Minister of State for 
that the federal government is working in collaboration with the Minister of Finance to recapitalize the Bank of Agriculture to the tune of one trillion naira. This is to enable farmers in the country to access loan at affordable interest rates to boost agricultural activities. He made this known at the inauguration of a fish farm at Oyo Dam in Abeokuta, Ogo State. Jera Chingba has more. The federal government policy forced in promoting agriculture and self-sufficiency in fish production to close the demand and supply gap is yielding positive result with the inaugural harvest of a fish farm. Minister of State for Agriculture, Henekin Lukovu, who lamented the commercial bank's unwillingness to fund agriculture due to excessive charges, noted that funding remains one of the biggest challenges facing farmers. This he emphasized informed the move by the federal government to recapitalize the Bank of Agriculture to boost the sector. The minister, who puts the country's fish demand at 3.1 trillion metric tons and produces 1.1 metric tons per annum, leaving a deficit of 2.1 metric tons, said the federal government is committed to closing the gap through its fishery policy. Just last week, the uh, federal government, you know, um, uh, approved $1.2 billion to be raised by the Minister of Finance to capitalize the Development Bank of Nigeria. We're working, you know, with the Rabo Bank of Netherlands for the Bank of Agriculture, which is a specialized bank for agriculture, to be able to lend to prospective, you know, uh, uh, farmers. Former head of state, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo, called for creation of a enabling environment for investors to invest in agriculture. He suggested outgrower scheme to ease transfer of technology and to create employment opportunities for the youths. If you have a trillion uh, naira worth of fund. In Lagos, Vieira Chumba, MTA News. Now the United Bank for Africa, UBA PLC, has a yearly tradition of celebrating outstanding achievements of a staff that impacted on the growth of the bank, its customers, and the nations where UBA exists. Tags the UBA CEO awards, the event is also used to celebrate the legacy of the bank. NTA News was at the 2017 edition, which took place in Lagos. Over 10 awards were given out to staff of the UBA who had excelled in innovation, customer care, entrepreneurial abilities, and project executions across Africa. And we believe that as we do more, the industries across the continents that we are operating with for China. As we make UBA a brand, a brand of choice for everybody to work with. Able to deploy more than 500 POS machines and more than 150,000 cars in Zambia to enable the farmers to have access to government subsidies. If you notice, most bank talks about going the extra mile, but I talk about going beyond the extra mile. The high point of the night of honor was a special recognition to a UBA security staff, Ibrahim Ogbalagbo, who found and returned $10,000 cash to a customer. The Bauchi State Governor, Mohammed Abubakar, rewarded him with a personal pledge of $5,000 Governor Bindu Jibrela of Adamawa State gave him $10,000, and he got additional 5 million naira from the Senate, including other undisclosed financial rewards. Captured the theme of the UBA CEO Awards 2017, The Journey of UBA. If you're just joining us, you're watching NTA Network News, reaching you from the Lagos Network Center. We have more reports ahead from, the, from Abuja after this timeout. Stay tuned. Kings of African comedy gather under one roof. There's only one outcome. Then we bring down the roof. Come witness the craziest. Funniest, oh my God! And the baddest of them all, laughter goes. Are you a brain? Well, well. Come watch the biggest.
best names in African comedy at Glow Laughter Fest. Basket Mouth, Bovi, I Go Die, Shay Law, Gordons, Salvador, Osama, Bash, Kenny Black, and many more. You will never have a bigger gathering of jaw dropping, weak cracking comedians under one roof. One microphone, one net, all over Nigeria. Yeah, I'm gonna be there. I am gonna be there. I'm going to be there. Live and direct. For the time of your life. Will you? To win a free ticket, use 2,000 Naira in a month and text LOL and your preferred location to 240. No, love the fist. Love will kill you, Dad. <laughs> Glow Unlimited. <laughs> this must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's what LG wants you to see. Just what we see now through our technology. LG OLED TV. Coca-Cola, but you have to drink it here. It's finally here, the most anticipated sports show on live television, featuring great sports icons from ex-internationals to famed journalists and administrators. It doesn't come bigger than the sports parliament. Be a part of the biggest sports talk show on television. To help chart a successful path for Nigerian sports, 11 p.m. to midnight on Thursday on the NTA Sports Parliament, where the eggheads converge. Nigerians, suicide bombers are not spirits. They are not ghosts. They are human beings like you and me. They live amongst us. They are your neighbors. They are your friends today. A terrorist tomorrow. So you must know your neighbor now. Security begins with you and me. Know your neighbor. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects, and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. This is NTA Metric News coming to you live from our Abuja studios. Central Bank of Nigeria announces a special intervention window of $20,000 to small and medium enterprises in the country. Details with Vivian Idekwepe on Business News. medium enterprises have cut the support of the Central Bank of Nigeria as the Apex Bank has opened special intervention window of $20,000 quarterly for the sector as part of measures to provide liquidity in all segments of the market. This is also to enable SME operators whose businesses are eligible to access Forex through the official window to do so without difficulties. Acting Director, Corporate Affairs of the CBN, Isaac Okorafo, explained that SMEs will access the window on a quarterly basis, provided they meet up all requirements. And we are saying that each of them who feels he or she has been maltreated or hasn't been given the opportunity by any bank, they should report to the Central Bank of Nigeria. Meanwhile, the Naira exchanged between 400 and 410 to the dollar at the BDC segment of the market, contrary to CBN directive that it should exchange at not more than 362 Naira to the dollar. Still on the financial market, Nigeria's equities market Tuesday maintained a downward trend. It shed 0.58% to close at 25,000. 478.06 basis points. Now a pictorial illustration of the day's trading figures. That does 
this on business news on the hour. Now to the rest of the bulletin. A complaint treatment procedure manual that sticks to standardized complaints administration throughout the nation. To the public in Abuja. Online Kaoke reports. Security situation in the country, as well as conflict of different dimensions, challenged the capacity of the Commission's complaints mandate to develop the 47 page treatment procedure manual. This is part of the strategy to enhance our service delivery, become more responsive and efficient in the protection of human rights in the country. Deputy Head of Mission, Embassy of Switzerland in Nigeria, Dr. Daniel Kerven, assured the Swiss government continuous support. He noted that treatment of cases and complaints is a key element which determines, to a large extent, human rights violation and abuses. The manual is only useful if it is properly implemented, used and applied, and thus becomes an integral part of your organization. The collation and compilation of the complaint treatment procedure manual, which will streamline and harmonize complaints handling system in the commission started in 2014. In Abuja, Olayin Kaudru, ATA News. Time now for another break. When we return, global tidbits, sports, and more. Don't go away. Restoring growth, investing in people, and driving competition. Recipes for a strong economy. This is the focus on this week's edition of Tuesday Live, Economic Recovery and Growth Plan 2017 to 2020. What are those strategies? Tuesday Live, educative, informative, and incisive. A must watch. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDA, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria from a steeple products, steeple penalty, drug appendix with a review of NAVDA laws, national, regional, and international collaborations, cutting-edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service. NAVDA impact upon everything we do, including water we drink, the food we eat, they are important organs to the development of this country. And everybody should come out and join them and support them and help them to achieve the greatest benefit and success that they need to record. Let us support NAFTA to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAFTA safeguarding the health of the nation. Yes, so no be only government go stop Lassa fever. Now everybody go put hands together to stop Lassa fever. We don't hear so much about to say Lassa fever don't use tie tie resources for some part of this country then. But the federal minister of say make you no panic. Now to they clean our house all the time. We save rats come out. And if rats don't vamoon for our house, Lassa fever don't come out be that. Lassa fever get two symptoms. One at early stage, where they bring fever. Sore throat, vomiting, diarrhea, joint pain. The second stage now go there. Now they cause bleeding from the nose, the eyes, the spectrum. It go even they make blood to the come out from private part. Even cause swelling genital. Where we stop to the shop. Anyway, we are to enter our house. So make it block hand. Don't forget, say, division of the universal health company. That is to say, everybody, they can't be our car press to do. One make worry, want everybody, make we stand the Luga. Yamaya no good for us, oh, it's invited out. Sweat where they come up from person where they let a fever. We transfer the disease from one person to another. If you suspect any fever, we don't treat it with better medicine and you no go quick. Or you suspect any person where they let a fever. Make you go any health facilities where they near you. Last of them, go. How of now? Go give a red card. Now, Federal Minister of Health, bring to this message. One person injured as explosions hit Germany's Borussia Dortmund football team bird. For more on global tidbits, let's join Chimdema Mbilisi. South Africa's ex-president Thabo Mbeki has joined in the call for President Jacob Zuma to step down. He urged members of parliament to put country before party in next week's vote that will determine whether President Zuma should be removed or not. However, President Zuma's supporters have warned members of parliament to vote for him to remain in office or face consequences. And recent reports from the International Organization for Migration indicate that migrants who have no identity card and funds are being sold as slaves in Libya, the gateway country to Europe. In the meantime, 
The United Nations has renewed its call for aid reliefs in Somalia, South Sudan, and other parts affected by drought and political instability to avoid the risk of increasing deaths due to starvation. In another development, the G7 nations have refused to impose sanctions on Russia following allegations of chemical attack by Russia's ally, Syria, against rebels. That's Global Tidbits, Tundema Dubisi, NTA News. And Kene Mambo DJ is here with the sport update. Nigeria's number one golfer, Andrew Odo, is relishing the chance of reckoning a mold ranking point at the ongoing Sunshine Tour, which heads to Zimbabwe next weekend and earn a spot in golf majors. The 36-year-old reaffirmed his status as Nigeria's burst with a national leading score of 21 under over 72 holes, leading Yaris challenger Emma Scobler by 19 shots to win the 2017 Senator David Mark at 69 golf tournament at the Otibo Golf and Country Club at Begede. Hopefully this is just going to be a confidence builder into the bigger events that I'm going for. So I'm really glad that I've done this this year. Meanwhile, the Professional Golf Association of Nigeria has decorated Senator David Mark as its live vice president in honor of his contribution to the development of the sport. The Nigeria Women Football League enters week three midweek with seven games across the country. In Group A, defending... Rivers Angels host FC Robo Queens, Biosa Kings battle Adia Angels, while Group B will see Natarawa Amazis welcome Edo Queens. Soccer came the way of former Kanu Pillars basketball player Adebayo Adeliye, who was involved in an auto crash in 2016 when an American based pharmaceutical and wellness company presented him with drugs worth $500 and a cash sum of 50,000 naira. Nigeria's D Tigers and Portland Trail Blazers forward Al Farouk Aminu have been chosen as the recipients of the 2016 2017 Morris. Lucas Award with sports update Kene Imabudike NTA News. Now, a quick check on Wednesday's weather forecast. Hello, and welcome to the radar forecast. I'm Sophia Hasainusa. There's a general decrease in temperature values over most parts of the country. This is as a result of rainfall recorded over the past few days which is expected to ease the level of discomfort we have been experiencing lately. As for Wednesday, we expect localized thunderstorms to prevail over the southeast inland down to the coast. An overnight system which is expected to linger into early morning over the central states. Thundery activities over northeast and cloudiness over the remaining part of the country. Later in the afternoon, chances of localized thunderstorms are anticipated over the high grounds of the central states and also the southern cities. Stand by for temperature details. The round of the